Uh, filmmaking uh, to me is life. <laughs> uh, filmmaking is storytelling. It's creating an alternate universe. It's, it's a way for us to, I mean, stories have been told from the beginning and passed down and film, filmmaking is simply another medium to, to tell those stories and to allow us to escape into worlds and create worlds that we uh, normally wouldn't live in and, and experience something that we normally wouldn't experience. Oh man, filmmaking is this adventure in teamwork and storytelling where you have this idea and you can write it down, but instead of turning it into like just a book or whatever, you get all these other people with all these other skill sets involved and they each bring their creativity in their specific areas. And we put all the pieces together and we just build this piece of cinema. And that's filmmaking. Oh, uh, probably uh, Jaws. Um, and then I'd have to say um, Apocalypse Now, uh, for sure. And then I would go, I'm thinking Kubrick, um, probably 2001. One movie that kind of stands out as being a movie that like really lit a fire in me to like pursue film seriously is a movie from like more than a decade ago called A Portrait of Female Desperation. And it's, uh, it's like a staged documentary um, of uh, just these people with a camera and they go on this road trip to, man, I don't even remember the whole plot. But what really struck me was the, the whole production felt very accessible. I'd made some short films before and I'd done some documentary and I'd done some narrative. Um, and so I kind of had an idea of, well, how do I make something that looks a specific way? And that movie in particular, I was streaming it on Amazon, and I'm like, oh, this looks like a movie that I could have made, and it's on Amazon. Does that mean I could make a movie and get it on Amazon? And now I have two movies on Amazon. So that movie really, really like gave me the encouragement I needed to be like, hey, you can make something and people who you don't know, who aren't your friends and family, might actually watch it. I would say moving too quickly. Not, uh, I'm always, I've always planned, I've always been meticulous in my planning, but uh, um, I've made the mistake of uh, rushing. You cannot rush in filmmaking. You, I, I guarantee you, if you rush, you're going to make a mistake. And, and the problem is, in, in, it's not that you can't be perfect in, or you can be imperfect in film, you can. Um, but um, if you set yourself up for failure by moving too quickly, it's difficult. It only complicates things down the road and makes things harder. And then, uh, then you spend a lot of time compromising. I think a big one that I do repeat sometimes is uh, the scale of which I try to do something. Because I always hear, oh, if you don't have a budget, do something with very few people in very few locations. And I always try to find ways to be like, well, how can I do something without a budget that has lots of locations and lots of people? And I always make things a little harder for myself when I go that direction. Because I've made movies, I've made feature films with like three characters on a mountain. But I've also made feature films with like 24 characters and it's set in one place but we couldn't film in the same place all the time because of schedules so we like actually filmed in three different towns around Tucson and just edited it together to make it look like it was the same place and that stuff is definitely a lot of logistic gymnastics that I have to do that if we could just throw money at things and be like no we rent this location for a month you clear your calendar for a month we shoot the whole thing all at once uh, it would go a lot smoother just practicing the logistics and, and how you talk to people and how you ask for things and just how you put all the pieces together and figuring out who cares about just making the art as much as you do and working with people who are of a like mindset. Um, you can get a lot of stuff done. You might just have to work harder. I would like to become better uh, at directing actors. 
I like to think I'm a good, I, I think I started as a, as a director's director, as a, as a visual director. I think I learned and, and became and it came to appreciate becoming an actor's director, but I'm not there yet. And I would like to become uh, the kind of director that actors love to work with. I really want to focus more improving continuity. It's, it's really challenging sometimes um, when I'll put something together and I'll plan it all out and I'll have lists of like who's wearing what shirt when and where are the props and then when we film it and then when we cut it together so frequently we're like oh how did they end up wearing their hair in a ponytail versus not in a ponytail because it's like all they did was walk into the next room and now their hair is different. There's a very simple scene in Jaws where uh, Sheriff Rohde is with his son and he's contemplating that they've had the killings of the, from the shark and so on. And um, uh, uh, he is sitting with his son and they're sort of doing this thing with their hands. And it's my understanding that was improvised and then Spielberg saw that and captured it. But there's no dialogue. It's him communicating with his son. It's his wife watching and that is there's so much that's said and communicated with no dialogue and just this father-son play with their hands with his with his wife watching. There's so much that's communicated about that relationship. Uh, the second scene, and again, and I'll go from Jaws, you can use both of these, is uh, in Jaws when they load up on the, on the ferry and they move across and the ferry turns and goes and the actors, uh, Spielberg is having the actors move in and out away from the camera. Whenever I'm teaching somebody about filmmaking and blocking and framing, I use that scene. So much information is communicated in such a simple, brilliant way with the ferry moving and turning and docking and the actors moving in and away from the camera. I don't think a lot of filmmakers understand how simple choreographed blocking can raise a scene to next level. There's one episode of Queen's Gambit where uh, I believe it's Las Vegas. They get to Las Vegas and they do this crazy one shot as the protagonist enters the hotel and walks through the lobby and up this winding staircase, meets another character who's already on the top level of it and they have a conversation and they walk together and then they like come to a table and then it finally changes the camera angle. And there's just so many moving pieces with all the choreography for the background actors um, how they handle the lighting because you're going from really bright environments to really dark environments so uh, how you're creating the lighting to be smooth and I imagine they're possibly pulling iris in addition to pulling focus and I just how how long they had to rehearse to do a scene like that um, it's just I like to watch that scene over and over again and find little details that I can try to pick apart and try to think how would I manage something if someone asked me to do this in a movie um, just so it's it's really cool so I like that scene in particular that really stands out as like a scene that's like really cool that I'm really pleased with how they pulled it off